Well, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, uh, thanks for attending this and uh, and for your interest in our business meetings. Uh, not necessarily the 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 most fun or most interesting part of the MRA, but still a necessary uh, piece of running our organization. Uh, and I'd also like to thank uh, PMI and Sean Roundy in particular for all their work on this webinar series, which has been a, a great uh, part of our education program. Uh, so to get on to the winter meeting, uh, just a little bit of background about our business meetings. We, the MRA has two meetings a year. The, this winter meeting uh, used to be in January, now in February. Uh, and then our spring conference, which is in June. So uh, the spring conference meeting is just a, a half a day Sunday business meeting. And the winter meeting is a full day on Saturday and then the half day meeting on Sunday. Uh, so this one is really our, our main business meeting when we get a lot of work done with our full board. Uh, again, the Saturday session is uh, is more of a work session, and then the Sunday session is the formal meeting where we actually vote on motions and approve budgets uh, and voting members and those sorts of things. Uh, and then I mentioned our board. For those who don't know, the, the MRA structure is a little bit different than many organizations in that our board consists of one representative from every uh, regular member team, which is a fully accredited team. So we can have up to 60 board members, uh, which makes for, uh, in some ways uh, uh, a lot of uh, various opinions and, and votes and uh, a little bit of a cumbersome way to run a meeting, but it also brings in uh, a whole lot of various views and perspectives. Uh, so that's a background on, uh, on how we do our organization. And, and again, the winter meeting being the big one of the year as far as getting business done. Uh, it is our, our big event. So uh, we started off, uh, next slide please, Brian. Uh, we started off with uh, uh, a discussion by uh, Rocky Henderson about our fundraising. Rocky's our fundraising chair. He's a past president uh, and he's been doing great work the last uh, four or five years on are recruiting corporate sponsors. So um, as a result of, of both successful budgeting and frugal budgeting and our fundraising, we've, uh, we're in a very good financial position as, uh, as nonprofits go. So uh, Rocky reminded us what the founder's vision for the MRA was, which was to, to uh, improve the level of, of rescue service to those in need in the mountains and, and to bring uh, elevate the levels of all teams uh, by sharing information and, and techniques and those sorts of things. So uh, we, we, uh, that kind of led off the discussion that that was what we were there for. We've, we've been successful financially and now uh, it was looking at how do we follow up on that vision and use some of these financial resources to make things happen. Uh, and I think that's what we did. Uh, we, we approved, um, uh, probably as far, at least in recent years, we approved the biggest amount of spending uh, directed at specifically doing uh, things dedicated towards our mission, um, which is education and, and rescue in the mountains. So uh, the first thing we talked about was a scholarship program. And uh, Brian, I think, is going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the intention of our scholarship program was to bring new members out to MRA conferences and meetings because, you know, to really get the full power of the MRA as a group, you really need to send a representative and that representative needs to bring all the good information and the, the training knowledge and the rescue knowledge back to their home teams. So we were trying to come up with ways to incentivize new people to come out to the conferences. And this scholarship program was one that we launched as a test project uh, for the last conference, and while the program was very popular, everybody liked the idea of the scholarship program, we discovered that it was sort of unused. So we were trying to find out some better ways to get money to our teams, to get them at our conferences, and it, it, it was basically a great way for us to give back to our member teams. So uh, different methods were discussed uh, during that Saturday session. Uh, led by Antonio. Antonio did a, some great work for us sending out polls out to 
the member teams in the different regions, trying to find out if they sent members and how many members and did they use the scholarship funds. So we got a lot of great data back that we were able to take into our breakout sessions later in the afternoon to figure out how we can enhance those programs further. Uh, Charlie also spent some time talking to us about marketing videos uh, for the MRA because having that video would be just a, a fantastic way for us to promote the Mount Rescue Association to our donors who are starting to give us good money to be able to support our programs, our educational programs, and also to become a recruitment tool for our member teams. Uh, I had originally hoped to show you a video along the lines of what we were looking to do done by uh, Mountain Rescue Ireland. Uh, apparently I can't play that through the, uh, the audio here uh, on this presentation, but if you go back to the recorded presentation once that's posted up by PMI, you'll be able to play the video down or you could go to uh, YouTube and go watch it uh, yourself. <coughs> Excuse me, but the idea was we wanted to come up with a tool that not only could we use as MRA National to sell what it is that we are, but also uh, a tool that can be used by our member teams to sell what it is they do, um, to be able to recruit and be able to bring home some additional donations to support their operations. After lunch, we went into our breakout sessions. Uh, so we had four sessions that were identified by our strategic planning meeting that was done uh, the previous year, with the most important being education, led by Charlie Shemansky, uh, internal marketing, uh, led by Art Fortini, Safety uh, by Ski Clatter, and our spring conference and long range planning, which was led by John Myers, who's hosting our current conference uh, coming up this year. Each of those uh, breakout session groups were given a very specific mission. We wanted them to review and critique the current state of each of those programs to identify a future end state, what we wanted these programs to look like if we had all the money and all the resources to start doing the things that we want to do to start laying out some high-level goals of what these groups are going to achieve and figure out what task groups we need to build up to get some progress moving on these projects and what funds we needed to add to our budget to accomplish our goals. Hey, hey Brian, can I interrupt for just a moment? Uh, to give some perspective on, the, uh, on these breakout sessions and the strategic initiatives uh, and our whole strategic planning process, Six years ago, we started uh, with our first five-year strategic plan, uh, and, and we worked on a bunch of the initiatives identified then. And then last year at the winter meeting, we reprioritized and, and came up with uh, a, a new list of strategic initiatives, or basically our to-do list. So when Brian mentioned that education is the most important, uh, it's not to say that the others aren't important, but it received the most votes by last year's attendees as to what was our highest priority to work on. So uh, these four things were at the top of the list of the things that we need to work on first. Uh, and, that, and so that's what we did this year is to, to roll up our sleeves and go to work on them. So go back to you, Brian. Sure. So with education, uh, one of the things that was highlighted was that we needed to fix our existing learning management system. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a learning management system that's hosted on a Moodle website, which we're starting, we had been starting to spin up educational online programs, our, the first one being our uh, helicopter safety program, and we were working on additional programs. Unfortunately, uh, we had some technical difficulties uh, with our host service that they weren't able to get this back. It's been down for a significant amount of time and everybody agreed that we need to get this fixed and we need to get this moving. Uh, we want to increase the use of this learning management system by moving from current top-down approach where we develop programming and then push it out to our members uh, to move to a more bottom-up approach. So we're now going to make it so the member teams can post their own trainings on this and all of us can be learning from all the other teams around us. So content will now start to be developed not only from the, the MRA on the national end, but also each individual member team will be able to start posting up some great uh, educational opportunities. We also want to look at coming up with uh, more blended learning opportunities where we can have, uh, say, another advanced hel helicopter operations program that can be then supported by on-site instructor-led training uh, from our member teams. We also want to work on producing new materials to support the needs of uh, our member teams. Uh, so we've got several different programs that we're looking to spin up and move 
to this online learning management system in a series of videos or uh, uh, standard online learning where you're going through page by page, answering questions, having quizzes, and possibly certifications that would follow. There are a lot of programs that are out there that are starting to point towards MRA materials. So we want to polish those materials up and deliver them as professionally as we can. <coughs> the Spring Long Range Planning Group, um, they uh, were spun up to basically ask the question of, you know, what can we do to help support the conferences that we host every year? They all agreed that our three-year deep committee of the uh, previous year's team, the present year's team, and the next year's team uh, is working, that it's helping to pass on the institutional knowledge that needs to be there to, to get the conferences done right. But we realize we need to do a lot more to help support uh, the member teams hosting our conferences. Um, most people don't realize, didn't realize at the meeting that MRA as a national organization did not coordinate and does not manage the whole conference. That it's the individual teams or member teams that are hosting the conference, that are putting up the money, that are putting out all the manpower to make these conferences what they are. So we wanted to figure out what we can do to be helping those member teams uh, and help establish some consistency amongst teams and being a support network for them. So one of the things that we're looking to do is develop an incident action plan template and a manual for how we manage conferences. So what to expect and when to expect it uh, for these host agencies. The group also uh, recommended that we appoint a conference lead uh, or a chair to help uh, provide consistent support from host team to host team year after year. Uh, the Vice President of the MRA will continue to work on long-range planning and recruiting teams to uh, host these conferences, uh, but we need to be looking out further and doing more to uh, entice people to host this conference. So uh, I believe we're looking for a host in 2018, so if anybody on the call is interested, uh, please see, uh, reach out to us. Uh, and then we had safety with Skeet, so I'll sort of turn the, turn the microphone over to Skeet. Thanks, Brian. Um, this came about mainly from the development of the Alpine Near Mist program. Um, the safety committee was convened to sort of review this and see how much more we could do other than the smaller niche that the Alpine Near Mist program uh, was occupying. We felt like it was not quite meeting all the needs of the MRA, not because that one particular niche was not working well, but rather because we thought there were more things that could be done. So. The uh, purpose of the committee was reviewed, and a couple of the goals that we came up with were to provide tools, programs, and information that would help drive the MRA teams to achieve a zero incident safety type culture and different ways to, in which to create that. Also, we wanted to encourage and help the teams to share their internal safety related information and incidents to the benefit of the other teams and expand on a way to actually re-disseminate that information and actually draw conclusions from that. Next, please. So from that, we wanted to establish a lessons learned program, sort of a new moniker for this, to disseminate safety relevant information to all of the MR teams. After a discussion, we felt that um, using the term lessons learned was a little bit more encompassing and also a little less harsh than the term near miss, and it might improve the team participation. The idea of a near miss is sometimes difficult for people to admit to, and because of that, we thought by rebranding this or renaming this, perhaps we could get better um, participation. So along the lines of that as well, we're going to continue to uh, sponsor the uh, Lesson Learn program um, at the uh, spring conferences. Next. In addition, what we would like to do is try to periodically uh, distribute the uh, safety-related bulletins on these topics to all of the teams. And we could do this by the MRA lister using the existing subscription uh, list. And we could put up things that may be disseminated by other means, but may be missed by some members who hopefully will be on the MRA lister and log onto that periodically. These could be collected both from 
uh, committee members, but also from um, different um, uh, sources as well from the, um, the outdoor community. We also wanted to create and publish safety posters as an idea for marketing or safety. We do one or two or three of these a year, publish them in the Meridian. They're things that could be posted in um, noticeable areas around the, um, uh, the team facilities uh, that had to do with safety um, in general and also with marketing to some extent. We'd like to get that going uh, pretty soon, have those available uh, during this upcoming year um, as well. Also, we wanted to help teams develop their own internal safety program sort of on a formal basis, something that could be set down in paper uh, that they could adhere to to make the, the quality better. It would foster uh, improved awareness for safety principles uh, among all the team members. We would also provide tools to help the team select and implement these internal safety programs and try to base these on uh, modern industrial safety program examples and programs that are going on now. We do have the benefit of um, having, as you can see, uh, affiliation with PMI and other groups that are doing uh, commercial type training and we can um, utilize the information they have and the experience they have to make this happen to publish uh, tools and examples and forms of reference, et cetera, for the Safety Committee website, which we will also develop, that will be on the MRA uh, website. At some time down the road, it might even be nice to have some type of requirement, not specifically, but rather in general, for each team to at least have some type of documented internal safety program and documented policies to go along with that that would hopefully uh, improve um, the safety for each of uh, the teams. We're also going to continue to sponsor this lesson learned discussion panel at the spring conference. Um, we will be through the MRA Lister, as uh, mentioned, um, um, asking for submissions that the safety committee will screen, moderate, and normalize, mainly meaning making these anonymous before publishing uh, to the extent that people would like to do this. We would like to have more incidents um, submitted to us. And by making these anonymous, hopefully we can use these as a learning platform. Um, we'll, sub, uh, we'll have forms um, on the website for people to submit this as well. Um, and also, once these are uh, accumulated as sort of a bank uh, of these type of, uh, of uh, lessons learned, these will be retrievable as well. In other words, we could have lesson learned number 25 or whatever, perhaps might be a hardware failure type of example and people could look these up uh, for reference in the future as, as well. We also utilize these lessons learned uh, as submissions um, for the Meridian for articles to help fill that out as well. And again, we will be representing this information at the Lessons Learned uh, pro program in Port Angeles uh, this summer. And that's it, Brian. Great. So all three of these, you know, our, our safety programs, our education programs, our conferences are all really important parts of the MRA mission. Uh, one of the things that we realize, though, is we need to better market what resources we do have available to our member teams. And that's where our internal marketing uh, breakout group uh, moved on with, uh, led by Art Fortini. So, uh, Art, I'll pass the mic over to you. Okay. Well, one of the things that, um, one of the questions we get frequently, uh, okay, I'm getting an echo here. Is everyone else getting that? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, you might want to try um, turning down the speakers on your computer, Art. Yeah, the speakers, yeah, the speakers are, are off on the computer. I think the problem is the microphone is still on. Let me try muting the phone. How's that? Are we getting only one uh, signal here now? There you go. Yes. Okay, very good. Let's go with that then. Okay, so one of the questions uh, we as uh, routine attendees of the MRA conference get are, what does the MRA do for me? And, and this pretty much tells us that we're not doing a good job of marketing internally because we get this question quite a bit. Uh, over the years, various uh, lists have been put together of the benefits of being a, a member of the MRA and being a member of an MRA team, and these lists have been posted on the website. Uh, but the question still comes about. So we had a breakout group that focused on this, and one of the things we quickly concluded was that while we have a dozen or so uh, people in the room that are uh, very into the MRA, 
there's a lot of people out there in the MRA that are not in the room that have very good ideas and, <clears throat> and so forth. So one of the things we came up with was to let the rest of the MRA contribute to this effort uh, by hosting a video contest at the June meeting. So the thought here would be for MRA members <clears throat> to put together videos that would uh, expound upon the benefits of being part of the MRA. So it could include stuff from the pre-existing list, but it could also include things like testimonials or uh, interject a little bit of humor, uh, just something that gets the word across in a way that the MRA membership is going to take notice of <clears throat> uh, and actually appreciate. Uh, so Rocky and um, John Myers were going to look into the feasibility of including that at the upcoming June meeting. Now, because June is right around the corner, it's not clear if there's enough time to to make this happen, but it's something that's going to be on our, our list of things to do. Um, similar to that would be to create a brochure similar to the existing uh, list of uh, items that exist and put that into a, a more you know, marketable package that uh, teams can hand out to AHJs they encounter, not just the mutual aid operations, uh, but also to their own AHJ just to expound upon the, the benefits of being a member of the MRA, uh, and also if you're on a mutual aid call out, or if you need mutual aid, the benefits of calling on MRA teams as opposed to other teams that uh, are available. Um, the Western State, State Sheriff's Association will be another venue where we can expand upon the uh, expertise of the MRA. Now, the intent here is that, yes, we'd be marketing to AHJs of counties where they do not have MRA teams, but presumably the AHJ of the MRA teams would be there as well. Uh, so we'd be marketing again to our own AHJs by doing that. Um, because we keep getting the question, what does the MRA do for me from members of MRA <coughs> teams, one of the things we thought would make a lot of sense would be to send a survey out to those members and solicit their feedback and try and get a better feel for what exactly it is they believe we're, we're failing on. So I uh, try to get some feedback from them in terms of what they value as being part of the MRA, what can we uh, at the MRA national level do better, what are we not doing so well, um, and what can we do to, to fix things. Um, and one of the things that would go hand in hand with that would be to put the results on the MRA website. Right now, when people want to know what the MRA does for them, or what the MRA does in general, uh, by and large, the, the website is the first place they go. And as Brian mentioned, we've been having some issues with the website and getting content up there, uh, but we're working to fix that. So in terms of putting stuff up on the MRA website, in addition to the uh, list of advantages for being part of the MRA, as well as the brochure for AHJs, would be to make the links to uh, these webinars a little bit easier to find, uh, not just the videos, but also the PDFs of the, uh, of the slides that we used, and for um, topics where there were specific uh, skill sets, for example, how to do fundraising, uh, how to improve your marketing, how to uh, recruit members. Uh, things like that create an additional document that would be essentially a, a list of bullet points that MRA member teams can pull up and actually take advantage of to then MRA having that information available. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, Again, with internal marketing, uh, <clears throat> builds upon something that Brian said earlier about trying to get new people to attend the meetings. A one approach would be to raffle off a pack or some other bit of swag uh, for people attending the meeting for the first time. And we can that to include not just new people that haven't been to the meeting in X many years. Uh, right now, I think we're looking at just newcomers just to try and get some fresh blood into the meetings. Uh, Rocky assured me that he could get um, various giveaways from uh, a variety of manufacturers out there, so that shouldn't be an issue. One of the benefits of the past is letting the membership know that these things are available. So 
uh, we're going to do something like this, you know, clearly we'd have to advertise it uh, before the meeting so that people know that they should be attending. So we'd have to, you know, not only put a, a notice about it in the Meridian, but probably also send out something on the admin lister uh, just to get the word out to everyone. Uh, I can also uh, work with the host team uh, up in uh, Olympic to advertise that this route was just and have them include that in their um, marketing material for the meeting. Uh, when we do have new attendees at the meeting, uh, get together with them at some point during the meeting, presumably towards the end, and just do a, an exit interview, if you will. Uh, ask them what they liked about the meeting, what they didn't like about the meeting, and, and what happened that was meant to make them more or less likely to come back next year. Uh, so you know, let's try and get some feedback from the people that we're, we're trying to, to entice. Uh, using the admin lister more effectively. Right now, we're very, very careful about not clogging up people's inboxes with stuff from the admin lister. Uh, we try to keep that at a high level. Um, but marketing to our own individuals, um, particularly the ones that are constantly asking us what's the benefit of being part of the MRA, uh, we need to get feedback to them to, to answer that question. Uh, so using the admin lister a little bit more liberally <clears throat> is one of the approaches that we discussed. Um, one of the big ones that uh, seemed to strike a chord with everyone was to have the region officers visit region teams during the individual teams' meetings. So, you know, not just have one or two reps from each team come to a region meeting once every quarter or how often they, they meet in your region, but have the region officers go out to your meetings just to uh, remind people that the MRA needs them. They're part of the family. Um, and this would you know, clearly be a responsibility to fall with the region officers, not just the region chair, but region officers in general, depending on uh, how geographically diverse the region is and how much real estate there will be there to cover. Uh, and then finally, to uh, continue the scholarship program for new attendees at the, the June MRA meeting. Uh, the program that we kicked off last year was successful, although because we didn't have a whole lot of time to get the word out, uh, the program was approved in February, and then in June was not too far uh, away from that. Uh, we were able to make it work. Several people did take advantage of that, um, and we spoke to some of the people that did attend, and uh, in general, the feedback was very positive. So the plan going forward is to uh, continue with that program and to expand upon it. Uh, in the past, each region was given $1,000 to divvy up as they see fit. Uh, this year, uh, based on the, uh, the budget that was approved, the plan is to move forward with $1,000 per region plus an additional $50 per team in that region uh, with essentially no strings attached. That the region can divvy up that money for scholarships however they see fit. Uh, in the past, we had a requirement that they could not have been to a meeting ever and that they had been a member of the, their MRA team for at least two years. Uh, at this point, we're just going to let that uh, be at the discretion of the individual regions. So we're not, we're not going to micromanage that from above. And that is what we concluded with the internal marketing. Great. Uh, thank you, Art. So a couple of other things that we just wanted to note about uh, MRA marketing. Uh, we do have trade show banners that are available for the use of our member teams. Uh, there are three portable trade show pop-up banners uh, that follow our theme of courage, commitment, and compassion. Uh, these banners uh, are available for special functions, for team, uh, team functions, of course our conferences. They're shippable. Uh, we can ship them in a large road case or they can pack down into some smaller cases. We can get them to you and you can ship them back. But they're great professional looking materials to, to show off for your organization. Also, uh, we get a lot of questions from our membership about where can I get MRA logos and what format and you know how can we get them for our website, for jackets, for hats. So online we have a Dropbox account. Uh, that uh, if you send an email to info at mra.org or to myself or the president, um, we can send you the logon information, which has a style guide and a graphics toolkit of all the MRA logos and how to use them. Um, it gives you all the layout, color tones, and font information that makes up the MRA brand. And uh, we have various styles of you know, both Mac and PC, um, print, uh, screen print formats. Uh, all of that stuff loaded on our Dropbox, so if you need access to that for your team, 
you can reach out to us and we'll send you the log on information for that. And then we moved on to the Sunday business meeting. I think I'll pass the microphone back to uh, Dave Clark, our president. So this photo uh, shows some of the artifacts or, uh, or items, I guess, that are passed on from president to president. So I'm the current keeper of them. Uh, it's got the, the uh, gavel, which has an MRA pin and a, a piece of the MRA tartan. Uh, and a compass which is uh, used for basically charting our course and finding our way as an organization. And uh, recently you probably saw in the email that our first president, Dick Pooley, passed away last fall and his memorial service was at the end of January. Uh, his son, Bill, had a number of Dick's climbing artifacts uh, and among them was a, a leather strap uh, full of his old pitons and uh, several of those were passed out to members of the Honor Guard um, to keep and uh, I was able to get one to add to this presidential collection uh, which is what you see in the photo, uh, one of Dick's pitons and I like to think of it as a symbolic of anchoring uh, our organization to the vision of our founders. So uh, with that we moved on to the Sunday business meeting and as I mentioned earlier this is where we uh, do the actual formal voting and motions are made and the budget is uh, finalized. Uh, also uh, some comments just to start off. Uh, our Meridian editor, Laurie Clark, who happens to be my wife, uh, has been, I think it's been five or six years now, she's been the editor um, and she's going to be retiring from that position and she's actually visiting with our our new editor, Todd LeMaine from Corvallis Mountain Rescue, she's down there today. Uh, and so the next issue will be Lori's last and Todd has been assisting Lori uh, for several issues now so we anticipate a smooth transition. But we hope that uh, everybody will continue to support the Meridian. Uh, really the lifeblood of it is people writing articles and submitting them because this is an all volunteer publication. Um, so uh, we hope you'll continue to support that. My next slide, please. Uh, we uh, at our one of the first items of business was to vote a uh, new uh, full member, uh, Douglas County, Nevada. We also have a Douglas County in Colorado. Uh, the Nevada team is part of the California region, uh, just by virtue of the geography and, and proximity to other teams for reaccreditation. They recently passed their, uh, all of their accreditation modules and uh, became our, our newest voting member team. So congratulations to them. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Sure. So the, one of the first uh, budget items that came up was a motion to uh, approve funds to not only redo our website, but to get move from the, the host agency that we're using currently, um, move to one that will be a little more responsive to us. Um, they're also going to have a, a new content management system uh, based off of WordPress that I'm sure a lot of you uh, are familiar with. And we'll have a lot more people uh, that are MRA members that will be able to update as well. And uh, also to throw some money at getting our learning management system on this site hosted by the new host and get that up and functioning. Uh, so we, there was a motion and an, it was approved to spend $7,000 to get our website uh, back up to snuff and moving forward. Next. Come on. Scholarships, as Art mentioned, the motion was made and approved to add $1,000 per region and $50 per dues paying member team to be spent on conference scholarships. So we're going to be supporting that program even further and making sure it's more representative of how many member teams uh, are, are sending people. For the spring meeting, we had a presentation from John Myers presenting an overview of the 2016 Spring Conference. Uh, please do check out mraconference216.com. Uh, you can go to, uh, registration is already open, they have a great itinerary set up for different uh, pre-conference activities uh, between classes and climbs, 
looks like there's going to be a really fantastic conference coming up uh, for the membership. As for marketing, there was a motion made and it was approved for the MRA to spend up to $15,000 to pursue, uh, produce a marketing and promotional video. Uh, we're going to put together an ad hoc committee who's going to work on the script and also to choose the producer to go ahead and get this uh, material under production. Uh, one of the things that I do want to add that not only will it be branded with the MRA logos, but the tail of this uh, promo will be what we call a textless. It'll be blank. So your, your local team can now put their logo and their content, uh, contact information on it so it can be used to market your team as well. <coughs> For long-range planning, the motion was approved that the board appoint a member to oversee the spring conference planning process and allocate $3,000 worth of funds for travel for any other uh, needed expenses to get that conference organizer and planner to the, the host team to support them in whatever need, uh, whatever ways that they need. For ICAR, John uh, Chang, our ICAR chair, proposed uh, and a motion was approved to increase our ICAR budget uh, by another $3,000. For those of you who want to uh, look at the, the full meeting minutes, uh, the draft meeting minutes are posted online at this link. Uh, I don't believe you'll be able to click through it on this presentation, but it, you'll be able to click on through it uh, on the recorded presentation. And I know we're going to be sending out an email with the, the final version of the link to the MRA membership when it's complete and uh, available for posting. So that then uh, wraps up our winter meeting highlights. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you want to close us out or? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, we're uh, open for questions, which you can type in there. And uh, Jessica, do we have any questions yet? Yes, we do. We have a couple of them. Um, so the first question is, does the MRA have plans to reach out to rescue teams in the southeast to become fuller associate members of the MRA? Uh, yes, and we're already doing that. Um, uh, we had uh, Shane Schneider uh, from the, uh, I want to say, is it Hamilton County uh, or Knoxville team uh, was there. And, uh, and we're also uh, looking into bringing cave rescue teams on board in some fashion, and that, that's been a, a, an item of discussion over the last couple of years. Uh, so we're still working on that. But but the goal is to, uh, you know, go, going back to our uh, mission uh, and our vision of, of raising the level of rescue service, is to get those teams involved. And uh, there's a lot of things we can learn from them, and they can learn from us. So uh, somehow over the next few years, we'll continue to work on that. And for those southeastern okay. members, um, it would be part of the Appalachian region, uh, Doug Vilecchio. Uh, Vleco, sorry, of uh, Stone Mountain Rescue is the Appalachian Mountain Region Chair, um, and you can find a link to his email on the website, or you can uh, send an email to me at uh, brianenberg at gmail.com, and I'd be more than happy to help as I'm also in that region. Okay. And the next question is, how is the MRA working to encourage its member teams to report their mission statistics each year? And are there any thoughts on making it mandatory? Uh, well, as far as mandatory, that's been a, uh, an item that's been discussed at meetings several times. Uh, our, our approach has always been the carrot rather than the stick. Uh, and I if I remember right, the number that uh, when we had a, we did have a statistics uh, committee report at the meeting, uh, and then we're up to 70% reporting now, which is uh, may not sound like a lot, but it's a huge improvement from what we've historically had. So uh, the feeling is to continue with the carrot uh, and keep trying to assist the teams that may not be reporting and figure out what why they're not, whether if we have just gone to the new uh, ESRI ArcGIS system, so perhaps it's just a matter of familiarity with the new system. Uh, we're also uh, providing online videos and, and assistance for, for teams that, that needed to figure out how to report the data and trying to make it as easy as possible. Uh, one of the new things is that there's both a long form and a short form for reporting the data. 
so if, if teams, uh, even though the long form uh, apparently takes about three or four minutes per mission to report that, most of the items are, are you can uh, click off of a drop-down menu. Uh, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible and trying to uh, use encouragement rather than a mandatory uh, uh, requirement for the, t for the stats reporting. Yeah, and if I can add, uh, okay. I think our last presentation uh, was actually on how to enter data into the ESRI mission reporting system and how teams can start using that data uh, for their own marketing. So it'll give you, you know, how many missions you've attended, how many man hours spent on searches and on trainings. Um, you could actually now take a link from ESRI and put that map now on your team's home uh, website. So you can actually show your team's activity in a really interactive map. The MRA as well will have the capability of doing the same thing, and we're hoping to do that on the new website to not only show a, a map of the country and where MRA teams can be found and how they can be contacted, but also that'll show um, not in a whole lot of detail of how many missions teams are running and how many volunteer man hours our members are putting towards the search and rescue mission. So I think that'll also be another way of encouraging teams to participate because I know I wouldn't want to be the team with no missions reported uh, in my area. Okay, thanks. And the next question is, can my rescue team send more than one person to the winter business meeting even if they aren't planning on carrying a vote? Absolutely. Uh, and my team, uh, we had three members there uh, and only one vote, of course. Um, and, and for teams that don't uh, send a member, they can vote by proxy. Uh, and there's a process that we can, I uh, won't go into it here, but it's, it's pretty easy to do. So a team uh, that can't send a member can still have a vote. One of the things that we're hoping to do at the next winter meeting to be another carrot for attending, uh, we're basically across the street from uh, Petzl's facility in Salt Lake. So we've been working with them on possibly having some field training activity, maybe on a Friday, uh, to go out and maybe do some testing of equipment or uh, train on uh, some new topics uh, at their facility, which is a fantastic opportunity. Okay, great. Um, that is all the questions we have. So um, if anybody else has any other questions, you can get them in quick um, while I'm wrapping this up. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the screen back to mine. All right, you should be able to see my screen here pretty quick. And um, if you have any further questions, you can email president at mra.org. Uh, or if you know the specific person or location or department that you're trying to contact, you can go to mra.org and um, individual emails are listed on the site. And the MRA uh, webinar series hosts webinars frequently, so you can keep an eye on the MRA and PMI websites for future dates and topics. Um, those links are also where you will find the video of this presentation, the recording of it, and also the slides from this presentation. And those slides will have um, the video that Brian mentioned as well as active URLs um, so that you can click on the links to go um, to the places that were referenced during the presentation today. For news and updates, you can follow the MRA and PMI on Facebook and Twitter at the links shown at the bottom of your screen. And we don't have any other questions, so we're going to wrap this up. Thanks, everybody, for attending. We hope it was helpful, and thank you guys for presenting it. Thank you for hosting. Thanks again. Have a great day. Have a great day, everybody.